We've previously discussed some big differences between quantitative and qualitative research. Now we're going to look at how a study unfolds from start when we first get the idea to finish when we publish an article in a journal. And you're definitely going to see some more big differences between the two big methodologies. So first of all, these are kind of the general phases of what goes through doing a quantitative study. It's important to know quantitative and qualitative research take a long time to do. And then once you have it done, you have to write up your research report, submit it to some kind of journal for publication, and that process takes a long time. So the studies you are reading in these databases were conducted probably a long time ago. It just takes some time. From the conceptualization phase, which is where we get the idea and we ask the question, through all the way through dissemination, which is either going to be publishing it, um, go into a poster conference, and, po and go into a conference and doing a poster presentation. But if we don't tell people about our studies and the results, then what good was the study in the first place? We're trying to improve our scientific knowledge of our nursing discipline. So this is a pictorial representation of what all happens during a quantitative study. And you'll see this comes right, right from your textbook. It's not important that you understand the whole steps one through 18. That's, that's not necessary. I just wanted to show you a couple of things. First of all, everything in research starts with a question. So in step number one, you are delimiting your problem. What is the problem and what is the question you're trying to find the answer to? And then you go through looking at the related literature which we'll talk about later in this class, come, come up with your definitions and form a hypothesis. That's your educated guess of what do you think is going to be the answer to your question. Then you decide what kind of design, figure out what kind of people are going to be in your study, and figure out all of the methods for data collection. What instruments are you going to use? Are you going to measure blood pressure? Are you going to use a 12-item survey? All of that kind of happens in this design and planning phase. Then you actually go to the empirical phase, which is measurement. So you're going to collect your data and you're going to code it. So you might have to turn some things that are not numbers into numbers so that you can then measure it. Then you get to do the statistical analysis, which I like. Most people don't like that, but you analyze your results and interpret what they mean. And then you get to communicate it to other people so that practice can be changed and improved. Now, that was very linear. Step one, step two, all the way down to step 18 in a very straight, neat pattern. This is qualitative research, very different. It's cyclical. Sometimes we go back and forth and that's okay, but it always still starts with your planning. Okay, before we collect any data, we have to sit down and plan out our study so that it's a good, rigorous study. We identify our problem, which also means asking a research question. We sometimes do a literature review, but sometimes we don't in qualitative. And then we decide who's our participants going to be and all of that. But then we go into this circular motion. We collect data. We analyze it. We go back and make some more decisions. We collect some more data, et cetera. So it can definitely, we can change our mind and that's okay in qualitative research. So just kind of to drive that point home, I put the emergent design there. That means that the design for qualitative research actually kind of unfolds as you're going through the study. You have a general idea of the direction you want to go because you start with a research question or maybe more than one question that you want the answer to. And then you make decisions as you go to help you get to the answer to those questions. And sometimes that involves making new decisions that you didn't originally plan to do in the first place. And sometimes what happens is you may interview all of your participants one time, and as you're looking at the data, you're like, you know what? I really wish I would ask them this question. So what do you do? You can actually contact those folks again and see, would you mind being interviewed again? It'll probably only take 15 minutes. If they say yes, you re-interview them on that new question to get that new data, and then you're done. Um, if they say no, of course, then you can't ask them any more questions, but still, quantitative and qualitative are very different. 
They both are important to nursing research and the type of design you choose to use all depends on the question that you want to know the answer to. Depending on the question, sometimes you'll use quantitative, sometimes you'll use qualitative, or sometimes you'll use both in the form of a mixed method study.